Hi, I'm Kira Leighton, the Makerspace Educator at the Discovery Children's Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. And in honor of Earth Day, I wanted to do a recycled art project. Now, it's a little late for Earth Day now because this project took me a little bit of time. So anytime you make something, it's going to take some time and that's okay. But I still wanted to share my creations with you so that way maybe you guys can turn some trash in your home into a treasure. So, uh, I don't know about you guys, but my family drinks a lot of milk and I've ended up with loads of these little cartons all over the place. Um, so instead of throwing them away, I wanted to try and turn them into something. Uh, can you guess what I thought I'd make these into? I've always thought they're shaped a little bit like houses, so I thought it'd be really fun to make a bunch of milk carton houses. Um, now, if you've ever traveled to different places, or maybe if you live in some of these places, there are really, really skinny houses that are called townhouses or row houses. So I did a little research into them on the internet and found some beautiful pictures of San Francisco and Amsterdam. They're very famous for their row houses. And I thought it'd be really fun to make a little village of colorful row houses. And I'm including a couple different ways that you can do this because I know not everybody has all these art materials in their home, so I was trying to come up with some ways that everybody can at least try one style of house. So because I'm pretty, I'm pretty crafty and I like to keep some paints around in my house and paint once in a while, um, the first houses I tried making were acrylic paint houses. Now, uh, acrylic paints stain really badly. Uh, they don't come out of clothes and they don't come off of surfaces very easily. So if you're working with acrylic paints, make sure you have a place that is okay with your family to use. And then make sure you cover it and protect it and protect your clothes from getting stained. If you see here on the floor, I've got a spotted and dirty old sheet that we don't use on the beds anymore. It's just my painting uh, sheet. So anytime I'm starting to paint, I lay it out to cover the ground so I don't get paint anywhere and it protects it from getting stained. And then as far as my clothes go, I can either put on something that I don't really care about that I call them my striped clothes. I can put them on, get them messy, and it's okay if they get ruined. It's usually something old that I don't wear out to nice places a whole lot. Um, you can ask your parents if they have an old oversized shirt, you can use a painting smock, or if you're like me, you find an apron that you were not using in your kitchen anymore and you can turn it into your painting apron. Protect your clothes, protect your surfaces, because acrylic paint is horrible to try and get out of stuff. But it's pretty effective to work with. So first of all, before you start painting with acrylic paint, you always want to put on a uh, what we call a primer layer. Um, so if you see this milk carton right here, I've painted it just a little bit with white, so that way it kind of starts to block out some of the writing on my carton here. It doesn't need to be a perfect layer because uh, this isn't going to be my final layer, but I just wanted to block it out so it was easier to paint over. So after I finished priming my milk carton with the white paint, I was able to paint over the top of these other colors. Um, I usually recommend starting with the light colors first and then layering the darker colors over the top of them. Um, now acrylic paint dries pretty quickly for a paint, so if you make any mistakes just let that layer dry and then you can paint over it pretty easily. Um, and then what I did for my last detail is I used a really really thin black brush to do all these small details once the rest of the carton had dried. Um, so that was a pretty fun house, I think this guy turned out pretty well. Now I decided to try something a little different with the acrylic paint, I also happen to have a hot glue gun. So I thought I'd try using my hot glue gun as a brick stencil, and this is what I turned out with. Now I didn't prime this milk carton, I just wanted to see what would happen if I chose not to prime it. And I think it still turned out pretty well, you can see the writing through it and everything. But I hot glued my brick pattern onto this whole carton. I painted over the top, and once the paint had dried, I peeled off all the hot glue to give me this brick and mortar look to it. Uh, and then I painted the windows and the door over the top at the end. I was also thinking of ripping off the roof tiles that I had done with hot glue as well, but I kind of liked how those looked with the hot glue still there, so I left the hot glue with the roof tiles intact. So those are my acrylic painting ones. Um, oh, I also forgot. Um, I also primed this carton as well, but instead of painting over it, I was thinking what if someone didn't have a whole lot of paint to work with, so I primed this guy very gently, and then I used Sharpie over it. So admittedly, uh, washable markers probably won't stick very well to this, so I use permanent markers. Again, 
they're permanent, so don't let them stain anything. Uh, but you're still able to draw on them and do a fun little house. All right, and then I started thinking, not everybody has acrylic paint to work with. Um, so I wanted to think of some other ideas of what we could create with some limited supplies. The first one I came up with was the gift wrap house. Now, um, if your family celebrates holidays or birthdays, you probably have some gift wrap lying around. And I realized no one had used this kind of ugly gift wrap in a long time. So I thought it'd be perfect for using on my house. So I gift wrapped my house here. So just in case you're wondering, it, practice using this is a great way to practice wrapping those Mother's Day and Father's Day gifts. Don't tell your parents. But um, it's actually a fun thing to practice so that way you can master your gift wrapping skills. And then what I did was I found some coloring sheets online of windows. So I printed up one of these coloring sheets on some recycled paper and I printed up a bunch of windows. I colored them and then I cut them out and stick glued them onto my little house here. So um, I colored these ones with crayons because I had a lot of crayons lying around. So you can do something pretty effective with gift wrap, old printer paper, and crayons. And of course if you wanted to draw your own windows and doors you could totally do that as well. And depending on the type of gift wrap you could possibly even draw on the gift wrap itself. Um, one option you could do is wrap your gift wrap inside out where the plain side is out. Uh, and then you can color on that a little easier too. All right, and then I also found some coloring sheets online of row houses. And so what I did for this one, instead of painting over my milk carton, I just colored in the coloring sheets, cut them out, and glued them on top. And I ended up with a pretty effective looking Victorian house. It's not the prettiest one of the bunch, but this will totally work if you're just starting out with this stuff. And all I did was stick glue it onto my carton. Then the last one I tried to do is a watercolor house. Now this carton material won't have watercolor stick to it very well, so I kind of was thinking of it as making my own wrapping paper. Now I've had these watercolors since I was a kid, a really, really long time ago, and they're very, very old, uh, and I remember painting with them a lot as a kid. So what I decided to do is I got some of that recycled um, printer paper that I had lying around, and I painted out my whole sheet of paper, let it dry or dried it with a hair dryer, and I ended up with my watercolor house. So this green paper was all just watercolored printer paper. I went all the way across. I also drew some colored pencil lines on it just to give it that um, panel siding look. Same thing goes for the roof. I also painted the roof. And then these were some more of those doors and windows I found online, and then I watercolored those as well. Cut them out and glued them on top. And this is my watercolor house, so you don't need pretty wrapping paper to do this. You don't need acrylic paints. Um, just color in a piece of paper and work with, you got and, with what you got, and then you can either glue or tape the paper onto the house. Uh, and there's my little village I have over here. And if you don't happen to have these milk cartons lying around, um, you could also build your house using some other recycled materials you have, like maybe a couple boxes and maybe a clean takeout box to go on top as a roof. Really, it's up to you to decide how you want to build your house and make it as creative as you can with the materials you have. And then, of course, if you're in for something really big, you can always try something like this. Now, this is my cereal box and milk carton castle. Um, yes, I did paint the whole thing gray with acrylic paints, and I realize not everybody can do this, but I would just show you that you're only limited by your imagination. I've got my little row houses over here, but if you've got all the cereal boxes and milk cartons you want to make a huge mansion or even a castle, you totally can. I don't know about you guys, but I think this castle's the best.
attacking. We're defenseless. Send out the robots. stress right now so it's healthy to have a creative outlet. Signing off for my at-home makerspace, this is Kira Layton with the Discovery Children's Museum. Bye!